Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. We're here for English learners who are already past the beginning stages of learning English. We use a content-based approach to help intermediate level English learners improve their English skills. Our current unit is Animals. This is segment two of episode 42. There are some sayings we have in English that relate to farm animals. Now, sheep are known for their mellowness, at least the kinds of sheep that we usually found uh, here. Now, since they are easily moved in groups, a person who is a follower is often criticized as being led like a sheep or being sheepish, not directly confronting a challenge. Now, cows are also fairly easy to move, so someone who is moved to someone else's will is said to be cowed into a behavior they really don't want to do. Then there's the male cow called a bull in English. When an idea or action falls far short of what it claims to be, it's often called bullshit. Now the second word means excrement, so it's a more obscene way of expressing that. Sometimes the expression is shortened by just saying, that's a bunch of bull. Speaking of unpleasant subjects like excrement, the scat of cows is very wet and forms a round mass when it meets the ground. These are called cow pies or cow patties. When they dry, they're called cow chips. Now cow chips, like buffalo chips, can be burned for a campfire when there's little wood around. There are also contests to see how far someone can throw a cow chip. Recording artist Jim Stafford had a successful song in titled Cow Patty. Now donkeys can also be found on some farms. These animals still provide a vital function in rural areas of Mexico. There donkeys are called burros, but in English they're sometimes called asses. Now this is another word to be careful about. In Mexico when someone says a burro about a person, that's a person who doesn't learn very easily. And the word ass, when applied to a person, is closer to the word fool in English. So all in all, it's best to use the word donkey when referring to the animal and not use these other words, especially when referring to a person. But at least now you'll know what it means when you hear or read it. A mule, which is a sterile cross between a horse and a donkey, is an important farm animal that's not easily controlled, since they sometimes flat refuse to do what a person wants. Stubborn people are said to be stubborn as a mule. Now chickens are noted for running away from trouble, and thus a person who flees a fight or a challenge is called chicken. Now female chickens are called hens, since hens protect their babies, their chicks, from danger. A person who's protective is often called a mother hen. Pigs, also called hogs, are noted for eating with a passion. They also eat quickly lest their food be consumed by another animal. So a person who takes without considering the needs of others is said to be piggish. Eating or otherwise consuming all of something and leaving none for others is said to be hogging it all up. Now, pigs also roll in the mud, so a dirty person is sometimes known as a pig. And then there's the poor goat. Now, goats sometimes are killed for their meat. And since goats are social animals, they tend to follow other goats when they move. A single goat from a herd is sometimes trained to go into a slaughterhouse and then rewarded for doing so. When it's time to slaughter the goats, that trained pig leads the others to their deaths. It's called the Judas goat, a reference to the disciple who betrayed Jesus. You'll also hear English speakers call someone an old goat. The beard you see on a billy goat may help explain this saying. Goats are pretty tough animals, and a person who has a tough attitude and lacks flexibility is sometimes referred to as an old goat. Now, the saying about ducks is not so personal. Ducklings can be seen following their mother in a straight line. The saying when someone wants to get organized is to get their ducks in a row. Now, people often raise ducks for the eggs they lay. A duck egg is larger than a chicken egg, 
Larger still is the egg laid by a goose. When doing math, the number zero is often communicated by saying goose egg. By the way, the word for a group of geese is gaggle, but most people just say flock. Now there's a bird that's not considered a farm animal, but I have to share a saying about it to redeem myself. You see, on a previous episode, we compared and contrasted dogs and cats. And during that episode, I identified the sharp pointed teeth of a dog as canine teeth. Now that much was correct. But then I erred when I said that by contrast, similar teeth on a cat were called feline teeth. Well, my logic wasn't too bad. Things having to do with dogs are said to be canine and those dealing with cats are called feline. The problem is I didn't do enough research. Those pointed teeth on a cat are still classified as canine teeth, even on a feline animal. I don't want you to repeat the same mistake I made, so I'm bringing this up. Now, there's a bird called a crow. It's not a bird known for tasting well when eaten. So when someone must admit that they were wrong, and I was wrong to call those teeth feline teeth, it's said that we must eat crow. So I'm eating crow right now. Those pointed teeth are canine teeth, and I was wrong when I said they were feline teeth on a cat. So it's crow I'll eat for lunch today. Maybe a little soy sauce will make it go down better. Eating crow and the previous examples are just a few of the sayings we have for farm animals. Do you have similar sayings about farm animals in your home language? These sayings add color to the language and thus are good to know. They may help you understand why animals are mentioned during a discussion about people. While thinking of these sayings, you're practicing the names of farm animals. It takes a lot of repetition to make a word from their target language part of the vocabulary you can bring to mind easily. Working with words during a different focus is a great way to get that repetition without being bored by the new term. This is one way content-based language instruction is so powerful. The needed repetition is built into the activities that are much more interesting than rote memory. Well, I don't want to hog up too much time on this segment. We'll return with some tools for describing animals after this. Is it true that ramping up your English is going to the dogs? Yes, it is. And cats, horses, rabbits, geese, jaguars, and more. Join us in our new unit on animals. Ramping up your English is for intermediate English learners from all language backgrounds and all ages. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our new thematic unit is animals. This science unit helps viewers advance in language functions that will stretch their English skills and learn a few things from dogs as well. Openness, trust, faithfulness, loyalty, playfulness, and more. The, the qualities that we as humans really do need to learn and to have in our lives on a daily basis because they deliver such beautiful rewards. Ramping up your English can be seen on the Ashland Home Network on channels 15 and 115. It's on channel 182 on Charter Cable in the rest of Southern Oregon. Join us for better English and a grand time with animals.